so you've not been going around the country singing for nothing, you've been releasing the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Something, something's cooking in Africa. And this third generation, this is something of the teaching of God to work in community, in this tripartite understanding, this three way understanding. It's important, I don't have the time tonight to try and break it all down, but work is very important to God. Work is very important to God. From the beginning, Jesus was sitting and he was doing work on the Sabbath day, and they came and he healed the man. And they came and said to him, You should not be that man on a Sunday. Why did you do it? Why did you do it on a Sabbath? And he said to them, My father has been working until now, and I am also working. As long as my father is working, I am working. One of my prayers for this generation is that this will be a working generation. The grace to work. Sometimes peace is expressed through work. I will say all that to me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. And in the 14th verse of Philippians, I saw something interesting because Paul was trying to build a case. You know, I'll go here and there, but I'll, I think I'll end up somewhere. Somewhere good. So the Philippians chapter 3, he says, Brethren, verse 13, I count not myself to have already, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Um, some forgetting is going to be necessary, but then I don't want to stay there. And he says, Reaching forward to those things which I, I press. I press, I press. So prophetically, I looked at why did God gather us in those crusades? Why would this be the most evangelized continent in the world? Why does this continent have the most saved people per capita? SGP. SDG. Or whatever. Most number. Why does this continent therefore have the most number of churches you will ever find in the world, the most gatherings in the world. Why would God gather us? Because we have to become a people that are a thinking generation because I believe that the third generation is a reasoning generation. And it must ask itself pertinent questions. You know, our parents would go to church without asking any questions. They grew up and were taught not to ask questions. They were taught to just obey. And that's because they were coming from very tough times. And so, they raised a thinking generation. Now, we're raising a generation asking us very many questions to a people that were not necessarily free to ask their parents questions, to a generation that never asked questions. But we are raising a reasoning generation, and we must ask the question, why was God gathering us? Why were millions of people packing out in crusades? Why were there God movements across this continent? And in studying history, you will realize that any time God wants to do something, gatherings are very important. And so as we look at the peace, there's a place that we're coming to that one of two things can happen. We ask the question, we either get it or we miss it. And so he brought us to this moment in time where you see things happening. And not necessarily uh, missing out a lot of those things, but as I look at artists across Africa, their music is being played everywhere in the world. Something's moving. African artists are packing out European stadiums, American stadiums, Indian stadiums, African artists. I didn't say gospel. African businesses are receiving accolades across the world. Something, something is doing because God is beginning to show us a picture of why He was gathering us. Then I ask myself the question: why is it that the most populated continent in the world as far as saved people by capita has the highest infant mortality rates, has the highest rates of corruption, has the highest rates of theft, the highest murder rates in the world. Why is it that this continent with the most saved number of people has been having the most um, highest index of poverty rates in the world? And God says because the people have enjoyed the peace from the gathering, but they have not moved to the next level. I asked, what's that level? And this is what God started to show me in scripture. 
He said, you need to teach my people to press. What are they pressing for? He said, there's an abundance I've put in place. There's an abundance that releases people into a place of seeing what it is I desire to do for them all. Everything is in their hands. And they told me seasons have changed. What seasons have changed? Our fathers lived and gathered us in a time when they could go away to America and speak about the needs in Africa and talk about a child with three flies on the face and ash on the left side and a little mucus coming out their nose and say, I need help for this child. And he said, but now I'm bringing them to a place where the work of their hands shall be blessed. He said, you gotta teach them to press because the days of borrowing are coming to an end. So I need them to understand we're in the middle of a transition. The problem with transitions, the problem with transitions, I hope I'm sounding like I'm doing spoken word. The problem with transitions is this. The problem with transitions is this. And because I'm in the marketplace, I understand things about innovation. One of the biggest challenges you have with innovation is that the new thing is always being fought by the old. Not because the old hates it, it's because the old doesn't know what new looks like. So you find a conflict and a tension between what used to be and what must be. And that's why the Bible, the Bible says that in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, chapter 34, verse 5, Moses, my servant, is dead. It's the last chapter of Deuteronomy. It's the last chapter of the Pentateuch. Yes, sir. And God is talking about Moses, his servant. And then in Joshua, chapter 1, verse 2, he comes and says, Moses is dead. I said, why is that? Joshua, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua 1, 2. He said, why, why is God speaking like this? Why is he repeating this message? It's because in one place in the book of Deuteronomy, he's talking about Moses, his friend. Moses, the one who had the calling. Moses, the one that he died with and ate with. And then in Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, he comes and talks about Moses. But that Moses in Joshua chapter 1, I always teach, is not, it's not Moses, the friend. It's Moses, the Caesar. Moses, the heir. Moses, the dimension, is gone. <laughs> then he says to him, what I used to do with, what I did with Moses, no, no, no. He says, the way I was with Moses, so shall I be with you, not what I did with Moses. And so the problem with transitions is that the complexity is that Julian and Reverend Tom are trying to repeat what happened with Billy Graham. But God never wants copycats. But God is looking for originals in a generation. He says to David, he says to David, uh, the Bible says regarding David, David served God in his generation because this is the truth. You cannot serve God in another generation. Your best impact is in your generation. Uh, please tell your neighbor something is, something is, something is stirring up in my spirit. Something is brewing. And so he says, God says, what I need Africa to understand is that this has not, this is no longer a borrowing generation. Amen. This is no longer a begging generation. This is no longer a generation looking for help and resources. This is a working generation. Amen. Would you just like you people to wake up for me and tell them it's a working generation? And so I speak of 